Weather World. It's your boy Tommy on the spot for Disney 101. And today is a very special day. It's probably one of the, when we first started Disney 101 back in 2018, I think a major reason for us beginning this uh, kind of journey, this podcast, this YouTube channel, call it what you will, is probably because of our very first trip that we had together back at Disney World. And that is what we're going to discuss here on this uh, video here today. And as always, I am joined by my main man, Steve, down in Orlando, Florida. Steve, how are you doing today? Uh, you know me. I'm magical, as always. Um, we are uh, doing some last-minute packing for our cruise that we're about to go on. And, Very cool. Um, yeah, you guys leave on Saturday, right? Yep. And where are you guys uh, heading on the cruise? We are going to uh, two places in Mexico. Um, I always, I'm always blanking on the first one. Uh, it's something Playa. Um Costa Playa, to something like yeah. that, um, and then Belize, Honduras, and uh, Cozumel. Oh, very cool! That's awesome. That is yeah. uh, should be a very fun uh, couple of days for sure. Yeah, fun, relaxing, and hopefully um, a nice kind of end cap to our uh, summer. So that basically, right when we come back, it's going to be a couple of days off, and then right back into school, right back into the the swing of things, so to speak. Yep. Very cool. Well, uh, glad we're able to connect here today for a very special edition of Disney 101. Uh, today, we're going to look back here at my very first trip to Disney World as an adult. Uh, now, I'd gone many times to Disney World as a kid, uh, but had never been as an adult until 2013. Uh, Steve, when you moved down to Orlando, Florida, and actually started working for the parks. Uh, so I guess where we should probably start off is where do you, do you want to give us a little background about how you got into working for Disney World and uh, what gave you the idea to eventually move down to Florida from New York and kind of make make that change there? Oh, sure. Um, well, you know, back in 2010, uh, it was my wife and I's first trip down to um, down to Disney World. Uh, and neither of us had ever been to Disney World at that point. Wow. Um, yeah, and uh, it was one of those things that we'd always kind of talked about. We always wanted to do as kids, never got the opportunity to for one reason or another. Um, and so in twenty, in the winter of 2010, New Year's from 2010 to 2011, we went back. We, we, we went down for a week, had an amazing time. Um, and then, you know, once a year after that, we had gone back. And then um, in 2012, my wife did the college program for Disney. Um, and fell in love with working for the company, um, came back. And at the time we were kind of in a transition period in our lives where we were kind of, you know, what, maybe we needed a little bit of a change and turned out to be a very big change. Uh, and we decided to make the jump. We both, uh, got jobs at Disney world and made the move down and we've been here ever since. That's very cool. Yes. And I know that, uh, you know, for me, I, I'd always been a fan of Disney World, and I think there was always an idea of getting back to the parks at some point. Uh, we've gone pretty much every year uh, throughout my life because my grandparents had lived down there uh, from the time I was itty bitty until around uh, 2001. Uh, because I remember going to, to the parks in 2001. At this point, I started thinking I was very cool. I'm kind of in that pre-teen stage or like early teen stage. Every photo with the characters, I'm throwing up my devil horns. I'm thinking I'm just the coolest guy in the entire place. And uh, I remember, I'll, I'll never forget, I was on It's a Small World. And when you go into the ride for It's a Small World, you're on that boat, if you remember. Mm -hmm. um, and you go around into the boat. And when you look up to the right, there's like some sort of dining. And it's like the glass is open. Yeah. So if you sit there, you could actually see down below at Splash Mountain. I tell this story, I mean, that's Splash Mountain, it's, it's a small world. I tell this story every single time I'm on It's a Small World. Um, and I remember there was a total bro kind of hanging out at the window and I was on the ride with my family and I looked up at him and he looked down at me and I threw him the old devil horns and he threw them right back at me. And it was like, I think both of us were probably around the same age and probably both of us at that stage, you start to think you're a little too cool for Disney World and, you know, it's 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 a place that's for kids and and what have you. But uh, I think once I had hit late teens is when I started to really turn things around and realize that there was um, kind of this idea that you could go to Disney World as an adult. 
And I actually remember the two of us coaching youth basketball and having a discussion about Epcot drink around the world before I had drank and me actually saying that I want to have my bachelor party be at Epcot to drink around the world. And uh, this is obviously way before I think I was with another young lady at the time. Uh, but I certainly way before I met my wife, way before I had any plans to get married. Um, and then lo and behold, in 2018, that's exactly where I had my bachelor party as you was my best man. Yeah. And, you know, crazy how, uh, you know, you put things out into the universe and they eventually come true. It's very, very true. Um, but yeah, 2013, I remember it was, uh, you know, I think we had all we had all become very uh, close at the time. My uh, new girlfriend at the time, uh, who's now my wife. Uh, you and uh, and obviously your wife, uh, we were all hanging out virtually every week. I think every Thursday in New York, we would all get together and watch uh, Thursday night football yep. with a couple of other friends. Uh, usually over at on Sundays, I would typically go hang out with you guys and we'd walk over down to Staunton's, I think the place was called. It was like a Peruvian, yeah. Peruvian yeah, yeah, yeah. bar and they'd have a couple of games on. And so you'd get wings and then watch the games there. Uh, we became very, close, very, very close friends. Uh, yet again, kind of a, uh, maybe drifted apart a little during uh, the end of college and had kind of come back together. And I really think it was actually when your wife had did the college program. I remember we all went out to myself and you and your wife went out to dinner and uh, I had just re was recovering from an injury. And your mm -hmm. wife had said, oh, you know, while I'm going to this college program, you guys should, you know, really try to reconnect. And we did. Uh, and it was kind of like uh, made up for lost time. And uh, so we'd become very close, I'd say, for that year and a half or so until we had gotten to 2013. I remember you'd revealed that you guys were getting ready to move to Florida um, at my Super Bowl party that year. Yes. It was at uh, it was Ravens and 49ers. Mm -hmm. my the Harbaugh Bowl. Uh, what, 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 I think it was Ravens 49ers. Does that sound right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was the Harbaugh Bowl. The Harbaugh Ball, right. And my wife was a big Kaepernick fan, and everyone else in the room wanted the four. The the story, yeah. win. Um, and they did win. And, uh, and Kaepernick had lost and, and eventually kind of just unraveled. But I remember hearing you guys were going to move down to Florida. Of course, I'm, I'm a little upset, of course, just because I'm sad because, you know, my, one of my best friends is, is moving away here. Obviously, things are going to change amongst our, our group of friends. But at the same time, I was happy for you guys because I knew that once uh, your wife had come back, I think she really missed kind of the world, so to speak. And um, I think uh, it was something that you guys both uh, were interested in and uh, were huge Disney fanatics at the time. What was it like transitioning into now becoming a major, like working for the parks after, for you, just really being uh, more of a fan and enjoyment of the uh, Disney parks? It was an interesting experience because um, there was a lot of kind of behind the scenes stuff that you really get to experience as a cast member and you really get to, you know, it, you get a much uh, deeper appreciation for how the park functions um, because you get to see everything that goes into making people's trips magical, you know, if you will. Um, and so it, it's really, you know, it, it definitely deepens my appreciation for everybody that does anything at Walt Disney World. Um, you know, at the same time, we kind of took a step back from actually visiting the park just because of how much we worked and how much we were there anyway. Um, so I'm glad now that we are not cast members anymore. We still do go to the parks and we still get to experience all that stuff. Um, of course, thinking about how much has changed in the past 10 years uh, at Walt Disney World itself um, and how much of that we were a part of, at least, you know, personally. So uh, it, it was a great experience. I look back on it fondly. Yeah, no, I remember. I remember thinking it was just the coolest thing in the world, uh, just because I, I remember when you guys first started uh, doing this, and then I, I was I was asking a million questions. Oh, do you get to go on the rides before you go to, to your shift? And you would, right? Just go on a few of the attractions before you actually started your shift. Uh, if I had time, yeah, you know, I mean, especially when I worked at Epcot, um, I would kind of I would hop on like Test Track or someone or something. Yeah, I think that's uh, very cool. And um, I, I actually remember when I, because your wife at one point was uh, working at the parade, right? She, so she worked as a vacation planner at um, Magic Kingdom. But mm. uh, what a lot of them will do is like they'll pick up kind of, it's only like little extra time 
a little over time, um, where you basically work crowd control at the parade, yeah. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah, and I thought that was uh, I thought that was the coolest uh, deal to go ahead and uh, to be the person who's like in charge of the parade. And I remember sitting there uh, doing, being at work, and at the time just in like a complete kind of dead endy type job that I really was at, just because you know one of these things you, you kind of just do post college and just thinking like, wow, good for them for making that leap and doing something completely outside the box and really going after something they really enjoyed. So. I thought it was really cool. And uh, this leads us to, you know, summer of 2013, almost 10 years ago to the day uh, as we're recording this here. And my wife, so I had a plan going into this weekend to go to the WWE Money in the Bank 2013 uh, pay-per-view event, which was actually in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And the plan was that I was going to spend the weekend in New York doing the all-star game activities. Cause if you remember the Mets hosted the all-star game in 2013 right. and yeah. Matt Harvey started the all-star game in 2013. Um, and so that was, I was like, going to go to the fan fest, going to go do all of that. And then go to, uh, then go to this pay-per-view with my buddy, Joe, uh, who ironically enough, I'm recording a retrospective on the money of the bank, 2013 pay-per-view and his experience there tonight and both this and the uh, Money in the Bank retrospective will be up. That'll be up on the Watch Long Wrestling channel. This on the Disney 101 channel. So we're both reliving that weekend the same day. It's pretty pretty incredible day how this all worked out, just kind of coincidentally. But um, do you remember how it, this plan changed and I somehow was now heading down to Orlando, Florida? Uh, I honestly don't remember particularly what i'm assuming and what i think happened is because it was around the time of your birthday i said you know what are you doing for your birthday and i think i think that's how it started uh and i think you guys were oh why don't you guys you know because because if you think about it uh, if i'm looking back at the exact date as to when this came up and i'm going to pull it up here um as to when that actually took place I think it was your birthday weekend when we went down. I think it was. Yeah, July. Yeah, so that exactly. So that this pay per view, July fourteenth, two thousand thirteen. So that weekend that we went was your birthday weekend. Your birthday, July eleventh. So I think that's what happened. So I think we started talking about. It. I think I must have said, "What are your plans for your birthday?" And you said, "Ah, oh, you know, probably just go to the parks or something." Would you guys want to come down? And that was like light bulb went off. I'm a big birthday guy as well, as you know. So for me, I always want to do everything I can to just get the most out of any birthday experience, whether it be myself, my family, friends, anybody, certainly myself. Um, have I mentioned myself? But uh, the so when I knew you were getting your birthday, your birthday was coming up, it was your first time doing your birthday in Florida. I thought, this would be perfect. Let me come down and uh, visit you guys in Florida. And that's exactly, you know, we kind of set the plan in motion. It was, I didn't have much time off because I remember... Yeah. The only we literally did it for one full weekend. We did Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, all four parks. And you guys were able to, because you worked for the parks, get us in for free, right? Yeah. It was like guest passes or something. Uh, yeah. So, so we, you know, when you worked at Disney, um, I'm, I'm imagining it works the same way. Uh, so you have these kind of main gate uh, guest passes, where you can allow three people into the park at a time. Um, above and beyond that, every so often, uh, we also used to get complimentary tickets that were good anytime, anywhere, whatever. Cause sometimes the, the cast member guest passes are like blocked out during certain times of the year. Um, but yeah, we were able to get you guys in and, uh, I think that, um, it worked out pretty well. That is awesome. Yeah. And I, I, I just, I thought it was the coolest thing in the world. Um, and so we were going down to Orlando for our very first trip all, uh, down to, uh, Disney World as adults. Uh, and so my wife and I, at this point, had been together 10 months. And I remember this because the we had gotten the happy anniversary pins. Mm -hmm. And everyone kept saying, oh, congratulations. How long? And we were like, 10 months. And they're like, great. Well, that's not going to last. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was, uh, we were very excited about it. Very, very happy to to have that. But uh, I'll never forget, we got to the airport. and And I was not doing the youtube here yet but i was on youtube uh my original youtube channel 
uh, still doing that. And so I remember us in the airport, very happy about it. And I'm the worst part about this is because I just don't make things easy on myself ever, right? Like, go to work, say you're not feeling well, call out the next day on uh, Thursday night and make it, you know, make things a little easy. No, instead, I had to go in and pull out Friday morning. So then even in the video, because I went back and I, I'm acting sick in the video. Hey, you know, under the weather, but here I am in Orlando, Florida. I'm just, I, I'm far too much. But I remember I, I called from Orlando because we had such an early flight that when we got to Orlando, it was like 7.30, 8 o'clock in the morning. So I called out while in the airport. And when I called out, was doing the little sick thing behind me. You heard like over the loudspeaker, be like, welcome to Orlando or whatever. Yeah. It I don't know if Buddy Dyer was still a thing back then. But oh, yeah, um, he was. is he still a thing now? Uh, I, I think he's approaching the end of his tenure. Oh, brutal. He's the best. <laughs> Love the bud. Um, and so, like, on the actual voicemail, you probably heard, like, the whole thing. And I remember just being like, oh, my God, and just hanging off the phone. Um, but we were there and uh, very excited. And we had set up, and you had also set up for us to also get a discounted tickets to stay on property. Yeah, we we um, we were able to, again, cast members getting a lot of discounts at Disney. Because, uh, you know, one of the main themes of working at Disney is you work there, so you can just give all of that money right back to the mouse. Yeah, uh, which, which you know happens a lot, but uh, we pretty sure you guys stayed at one of the All Stars. Yeah, we stayed at All Star Sports, and you guys stayed with us. Yeah, you you were able to stay in the room, or I think we all had just one room, right? Yeah, it was like one room. It was one of those like just two bad type of setups, and yeah, and honestly too, with with the weekend we were doing, we were in that we were in the resort for such a small amount of time. Basically so, just to sleep. <laughs> yeah, basically just to sleep. And I do remember I we met someone at the airport who had mentioned the, similarly that her sister was working in the parks as a cast member specifically so that her grandchildren can all come down to Florida and mm-hmm. she can basically get all the entire family in for free like once a year and does this like as a thing. So you're 100% right. A lot of people work at the parks in order to do that. Um, but I'll never forget, you also were able to get us this incredible deal on uh meal plans at the time Mm -hmm. and i'm pretty sure and tell me if i'm wrong on this i might be off but i'm pretty sure it was 30 dollars a day for the meal plan that sounds about right 30 dollars a day and it included one sit-down restaurant one fast service restaurant and one snack as well and you could utilize that through any time any, any way you wanted to throughout your entire days so what you were doing, I remember, was stacking your snacks so that at the end you were able to, when we got to, I think it was, I don't remember where it was, but you were, you were using all of the snacks at one particular location because you had stacked them for a while. I think, so I think during this time, I'm trying to think if, if that's how it operated, because that's what we would do if it was like Food and Wine Festival or something. Right. Um, Maybe it didn't I, happen. I, I don't know. I don't know if it happened during this time. I feel like you had a few different snacks when we went to Epcot, though. Oh, yeah, I'm sure I did. <laughs> well, maybe you bought a few of them then. But I, I remember that was... Uh, but yeah, so I, I, the way that it... For, first off, first thing we got, we had Magic Express. I don't know if you had hooked this up for us, too, but I'll never forget the Magical Express. It was the best thing in the entire world. You, I remember being greeted, told to go where you're down downstairs. There's a guy dressed up. He had the little Mickey Mouse hands waving to make sure we saw him. And, I mean, do you ever want to talk about something that really felt like you were embracing and getting just taken in by the magic? That really was the Magical Express. And it was uh, one of my favorite things. I remember going, landing in Orlando, getting our, um, getting our luggage, and then being, on, being whisked away on the Magic Express off to the world. And it felt like you were really being taken over by this incredible, like, journey. And they were previewing everything, which I thought was the best part of the uh of the whole magic express they were showing you everything to look forward to as you're coming to the parks make sure you go see phantasmic don't forget about going to go see what was the uh fireworks show at epcot at the time it was illuminations illuminations right uh make sure you try uh you know you go on the uh the different roller coasters that are there don't forget this i don't remember what the big ride was that just opened up at the time but 
there was like they were previewing everything and it was just the anticipation was building because even though we knew a lot about disney we didn't know too much about the parks really at all because remember i hadn't been there since 2001 and in 2001 when i was going to the parks i was like just starting to start to go on some thrill rides uh, mm-hmm. i finally was peer pressured into doing it because i got tired of getting made fun of for being afraid of all the bigger rides so eventually i just made the call to just go ahead and <laughs> start getting on the rides but this didn't come easy for me. It took me a long time to finally get like uh, used to being able to do it and being able to uh, start that. So I remember the last time, 2001, when I went, it's only the first time I did like Splash Mountain, a Space Mountain. But that was pretty much it. I didn't do too many of the thrill rides. So now seeing that Disney had all these different rides, I was really excited about it. Um, and going in, I, I hadn't, certainly not ever since I was very little, ever been to Hollywood Studios uh, Epcot or Animal Kingdom. So all three of those were brand new for me. And uh, if I may, just one thing about the the Magical Express. Um, it was not something that we had to set up for you. That was just a thing that Disney would include to anybody staying at a Disney resort. Um, that is unfortunately not a thing anymore. I know they got rid of it. Unbelievable. Yeah. I didn't think that was included if you were staying at a resort. Yeah, any any Disney resort. What a perk. I mean, because it makes it so much easier. Well, and, and, you know, that was one of the things that people have lamented over the years is, again, you know, compared to 10 years ago, how many different benefits you used to get, you get used to get staying at a district resort compared to nowadays. Yeah, no, I mean, it, you know, the, the dining plan, Magical Express, extra magic hours, um, you know, everything that was included. Now, there are some things that could be included if you paid extra for them. But, you know, all of those things were just rolled up into the package that you got. Yeah, no, that's that's unbelievable um, and just an incredible deal. And I'll never forget going there and um, we arrived. They took our luggage. They basically said, you know, go ahead and go get yourself uh, situated. Check in. We're going to get your luggage up to your room for you. Just like top of the line service. And I, I mean, we were staying, I think, at the All Star Sports. I'm not even sure if that's still there. But it was, if, if so, I think it was like probably the, the cheapest of all of the different Disney resorts. But you yeah, didn't value resorts. Thank you. Very value much. resorts. I apologize. I don't want to offend anybody on, on the uh, thing. But I will say that you didn't you wouldn't, you wouldn't, wouldn't notice any lack of um, customer customer service there. Uh, everyone was acting top notch and we were just amped up. It was uh, it was amazing. And I'll never forget as the uh, Magic Express is Magical Express is kind of wrapping up and as we're getting closer they're playing all these old school cartoons. Every kid on the bus is going nuts and so excited. And like that feeling of seeing the resort for the first time as you're coming around. And you guys were already at the resort when we got there too, which was pretty cool. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure we started like the check-in process and everything for you so that once you guys got here, we could just kind of drop stuff off and then start going somewhere. Because it might have been under your name. I mean, it had to have been. It had to been, right. So there you go. So then that's, so that's probably how that whole deal uh, worked out. So, I mean, what, what an incredible uh, kind of start there. I remember we were excited to see you guys. Hadn't seen you guys now in uh, what, 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 what month did you move down to Orlando? Uh, so um, my wife came a couple of months ahead of me. I moved down in March. Oh, so basically. Of, of 20, uh, yeah. So it, so it had been probably a few months. Yeah. So it'd been a little while. Um, and I think also at the time, my wife and I this might have been our first trip, really, as a couple. Um, I'm starting to think, I'm, I'm wondering if we did Turks and Caicos prior. We may have, but one of the earlier trips. And so for us, it was just so excited to be going away and seeing all of that again. And uh, yeah, it was really, it was fun. It was, uh, it, was, it was just exciting. It was good, good, good to get away, good to see everybody and certainly, um, you know, see you guys again and to be at Disney World. And so the way that we had set up the weekend was on Friday, we had FCOT set up for the entire day. We did the full day. And I remember you you gave the great um, the great kind of guide piece of it. Let's do FCOT first. Then after FCOT, we could do a day where we split Animal Kingdom and Hollywood Studios. Mm-hmm. And then on uh, Sunday, we ended with Magic Kingdom. And that day, because of the because we were staying on property. We also had extra magic hours at uh, Magic Kingdom until 3 a.m., which, like, I don't remember if that was, like, 3 a.m., like, if that was for everyone, but that's an insanely long magic hours. Uh, I think at the time, because it was the summer, I think 
the park would have cl- probably closed either at midnight or one, and yeah. then had those extra magic hours until three a.m. Yeah. Yeah. So just I mean, complete bonkers. And uh, <laughs> well, what an insane couple of days that we had done. Uh, and I remember Epcot. And and as a kid, you remember Epcot being the boring park. Like, why am I here? Why are my parents dra- dragging me around here? There isn't really that much to do, at least back in like early 90s. Now there's like yeah. Of, yeah. early 90s. There really wasn't much there. It was like, oh, I remember going once and being like, this is miserable. Why would we come to Disney and come here? Um, so I was like, this is good. We're starting here at Epcot because this isn't going to be the best of the parks. And of course, it ends up being the park I probably loved the most. I was just amazed by everything. And uh, I'll never forget. We did photos at every single kiosk you could imagine. Uh, I, if you look at back at this album that we had, the nerve we had to just pretty much try on every piece of memorabilia that was on sale with no intention to buy it whatsoever was yeah. a little a little over the I can't believe you didn't at least you didn't step in and say, Hey guys, enough. What are we doing? Uh I mean I was joining in a few yeah, I know for a few of those. You do have a but you do have a bunch of those. Uh yeah, you 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 guys definitely were involved in some of them. You had a Reptar shirt on as well, which I thought was uh, very stylish and cool. Of course. And, and uh, then we ended up starting our day off living with the land, uh, which I thought think is an underrated attraction to this day. Always enjoy living with the land. And then we had uh, lunch over in that little cafeteria area where they have the living with the land. And uh, I Sunshine guess they, what's that? Sunshine Seasons is the name of the restaurant. Was it a restaurant or it's a quick service, right? Well, it's a quick service restaurant. Because I remember we got that was what we used our quick service on. Yeah. Um, and so we got there. We're able to have a meal. I remember we just landed, too. So it was literally the same day. Um, and so we got in. Uh, I think that day, because I remember we did, I think Fast Passes were still early on in their tenure um, in terms of, like, the Magic Bands and everything. So you didn't really have to worry about not being able to get on anything. I'm pretty sure we rode mostly every ride. So this is prior to Magic Bands. This is prior to Fast Pass Plus. This is prior wow. to all of that. Yeah. So we're talking paper legacy Fast Passes where you would go, you had to go all the way up to an attraction and it had a certain hour window return time where you stuck your, your park ticket in and it would give you a paper ticket that you had to hold on to and that, you know, you had that certain hour that you had to go back within that time frame. And, and that was your Fast Pass. Wow crazy um how much has changed <laughs> yeah i love that though i thought that was so cool and then i mean yeah you'd get some of them where they'd run out of the the tickets but yeah um you know i'll i i remember we did virtual i think we did every ride i even remember doing mailstorm which is now frozen yeah so and you guys even did to, probably to your regret at this point uh mission space the more yes that was very early so we did mission space very early in the day uh, we did the one that's fun. Yep. It almost ruined our day right off the bat. I remember my yep. wife got sick, threw up. I was very close to doing it. And then we went into Club Cool, which is yep. where you were able to try all the different sodas from around the world. Mm-hmm. And, uh, of course, they had the the lovely Beverly Soda, which you recommended we try. And it tasted like uh, <laughs> it was just I didn't even know how to explain how bad this was, but it was brutal. Oh, so bitter. Yeah, it was it was terrible. And um, but we had it and, uh, you know, we were able to kind of try to, you know, get get through the rest of that. But that was uh, that was very funny. And then we went to. Um, and then I guess from there, we kind of recovered, we're able to see a lot of different things. We took a photo with every single piece of that park that we possibly could. Every photo op, every, sure sort, did. Of, every sort of opportunity we had an opportunity to take a picture of. We did. And uh, I remember being amazed. One of the things that really amazed me was that you were able to go into Spaceship Earth. I didn't realize Spaceship Earth was a ride. Uh, mm-hmm. And I think it was I think it was on this trip. Maybe maybe not. Maybe it was the next one. But I remember when I first found out that you can go to Spaceship Earth just being amazed. Which, it, I mean, I guess if you, if you aren't familiar with it and you don't realize and you don't think about it, like it's also kind of hard. It's easy to miss the entrance into it because it's kind of like underneath it you have to like you know there's not like a whole there, there's a sign but like it's not a huge thing so especially if you're just caught up in the we're here in disney world and you just kind of are like with your head up walking and looking at everything you would walk right past it and never realize 
Yeah, you would just think it's the it's the um, the icon of the park, so to speak. Yeah, it's, it's just there, and you kind of like, all right, cool, and then just keep walking. Yeah, exactly. Um, I remember I tried the um, with with my ticket for the um, what is it the uh, the snack. We cashed that in for the um, sticky bun over in the uh, in China, mm -hmm. uh, China Pavilion. That was fantastic. Um, and then eventually we made our way. So I guess the the big attraction there at the time was probably Test Track, right? Test Track and Soren were the two big. They were kind of yes. like Yes. Test Track and Soren. I remember being blown away by Soren. I thought this was just the coolest attraction. Still do, but certainly first time there and had no idea what it was and just thought it was the coolest attraction like in the world and um I I I loved it. I thought it was thought it was awesome and uh yeah, I thought that and also, uh, Test Track was very cool as well, uh, especially at the time. It was like a, a cool deal. And I didn't realize you were designing it, and yet none of your designs were really changing the ride at all. Yeah, well, I, you know, that's because when they marketed it, when they were like, oh, yeah, you get to design your own car and you get to test it out on the on the Test Track and everything like that. They're like, oh, it's going to be awesome. Like, you know, we're going to go and we're going to ride in our car. It's going to be so cool. Yeah. Um, and get there. It's not, not quite that. Um, and also, you know, being kind of one of the uh having having gone on the original test track i still think to this day that the original test track is better but that's probably you know that's my opinion oh they, they've changed it oh yeah yeah it used to be very very different wow i didn't know that that's crazy it used to be more like a you, you're going through the kind of traditional uh tests that an actual car would go through so like you know like with like the stress tests and all that stuff going over a bumpy road and like there's a bunch of different things that they used to have you should you could probably find an old video of it on youtube or something wow that's very cool uh yeah, yeah no, i have to check that out that's that's really neat. that's uh, it's pretty neat uh and so when we were there was it the old one or was it no already it was the new one it was the new one by this point gotcha, gotcha. but it was the old soren it was still soren over california at this point they had they hadn't changed it and updated it yet Oh, I was there, soaring over California, which I thought was great, especially because I had never been to California. So yeah. to me, I was like, this is really cool. Um, and then I remember eventually making my way to Disneyland, and then like that ride had no line <laughs> because uh, everyone there had, you know, why would they want to soar over their own state? So uh, it well, was like, I think it was also more because what else is there to do at Epcot? You right. know, if you're if you're looking for a big ride, the big rides were Test Track and Soren, and that was pretty much it. Whereas right. at California Adventure, there's way more stuff to do. Yeah, and it's so funny because that first trip we go there, I remember uh, we had this video of us in the Mexican Pavilion all drinking our uh, little margaritas. And uh, and I think we had spent so much time in the World Showcase there just because it's our first time really seeing everything. And um, I think that I, I didn't even realize that the Three Caballeros ride was there. We, we didn't do that till many years later. I want to say it was probably when you guys got married and my mother and sister were there when i saw it mm -hmm. i remember telling Ari, you've got to go on this ride it's the most amazing ride at the park and then she went back with me and was like yeah no i understand why we skipped that one initially <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I don't feel bad about skipping it this time yeah no like it was uh but you guys i think other, other than that one we also skipped ellen you guys were very clear to say hey we don't got all day in the park and that one's like a 45 minute uh nap so <laughs> No reason to do that one. And then also Planet was is Planet Watch with Rafiki also was that there at the time? No, that was at Animal. That's at Animal Kingdom. Oh, Animal Kingdom, got it. Because I know we did not do that either. Because right. uh, that because uh, that also is just like a petting zoo. Oh really? Yeah. Well, the end of the day there, we ended up going over to the uh, we did uh, the German it, German the Germany Pavilion. And that's where we ended up having uh, food at, what is the name of the restaurant that we went to? Beer Garden. Beer Garden. Uh, and this was the, probably the, one of the, the highlights of the entire weekends. I think I've been there three or four times throughout my entire years going to Disney. Uh, the food is top notch. It's all you could eat German food, buffet style. You've got a little show going on down there. Um, and we just had a blast. Uh, and it was a great way to kind of end our first day uh, before settling in for illuminations. Because at the time, too, with us being our first time there, we wanted to be a part of it. We wanted as much as we possibly can. You couldn't give us enough. So we wanted to be a part of every show. We wanted to be a part yep. of every fireworks. And uh, we, we were thrilled to uh, to witness that. 
Yeah, I, I mean, I'm looking through all of the, the pictures that you've posted and it's uh, it's bringing back a lot of fun memories here. I, I think that that was probably, and it, it's, it was one of our favorite restaurants to this day where you, I feel like even years later, we would go back to Beer Garden, even though, you know, there's like all the other restaurants that we could have gone to. We went to Beer Garden multiple times. 100%. Yeah, I remember when my, uh, my in-laws came down to go and visit the mm-hmm. parks too. We took them there. Um, and so that was really, uh, it is, it's a great, great restaurant. Can't recommend it enough uh, to this day. And I think also it, it brings back memories of this trip. I think so it's almost become like, this is a nostalgic place for us to go to because, uh, you know, we remember going there with you guys on first, uh, first trip down there. And so, uh, I don't remember if we did any meet and greets on that first day at Epcot. We did not because I, Epcot also at the time didn't really have a lot of meet and greets. I mean, there was like, you had the big one with like the Fab Four. Um, but I think again, it was even though, yeah, there's not a lot of character, there's not a lot of rides to do. We wanted to make sure that we did the rides first and foremost. Yeah. And then I think because, you know, we, we were doing so much in the country as we probably just kind of lost track of time. Right. Right. Because I remember we did do like Imagination with Figment and all that. Journey to Imagination. Right. Yep, and we did the seas because yeah. we had pictures of the season in the aquarium and stuff. Yes, and that uh, that 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 was uh, that's always a very cool thing because if you don't know what to expect when you're going into the seas, uh, it really does come out of nowhere. All of these animals and the aquarium and everything that's kind of going on. So uh, I, I think that was a big highlight of the trip as well, and uh, we were happy to kind of go through there and, and see how it goes uh, to enjoy that. I thought that was really cool. Yeah, definitely. Uh, then we wrapped, so we wrapped up night one, and I'll never forget, we had gone, and there was a bunch of camps that were, like, Brazilian camps that were there that day. Oh, Brazilian tour groups? Yes, Brazilian tour yeah. groups. And as they walked by, they were, like, all, like, or so in a group, and they were all chanting and singing and everything. And from a perspective of it being, like, a complete international deal, it was very cool to see, uh, from a perspective of you know, having people chanting and screaming all throughout the entire time they were there. It was a little, maybe a little much, uh, but it was, uh, it was fun nonetheless. Yeah, <laughs> I will uh, say absolutely nothing about any tour group at all. <laughs> you were not a fan of the tour groups, I remember back then. Um, but I remember we got back to the, um, got back to the uh, resort and we were white. One of the things I loved about the, the, uh, Disney when I first went it was just the idea that if you're on site there's Disney transportation to pick you up and bring you pretty much anywhere you need to go uh throughout the world so to speak so I thought that was so cool and I remember thinking like really good with the uh marketing here because they've set it up where you don't really need to rent a car um and you don't need to ever leave the resort if uh if you don't want to because we we got you covered to get anywhere you need to go yeah, in all of the years that we had gone down to to Disney prior to to it, we did not venture outside of Walt Disney World until we moved down here. And did you guys? So when you guys used to do that, you used to stay on resorts as well. Yeah, we used to stay on property. We, you know, we took the bus, we took the monorail, we took transportation everywhere. We never had a reason to leave the Disney bubble. You know, yeah. like you, you got your transportation taken care of. You have all of your accommodations, your food, your everything, like all the entertainment. Like we never had any reason to even think about, hey, what else is there in Orlando? Right. Yeah. No, I mean, it's a genius idea. Um, and really, even even the idea, because did you had you guys done the Magic Express before, too? Yeah. I mean, you had, it was just what you did. <laughs> right. Like you had there, there was not, you know, like like, yeah, you could pay. 70 bucks or 100 bucks or whatever it was for a taxi you could you know because also uber wasn't really a thing right is so, that what you have to do now yeah you have to take an uber you have to or you know have some other sort of trans like mirrors has other stuff that you can do so you can you do have options but what used to just be included and complimentary now you have to pay extra for it yeah that's really lame um it's it's really tough too because you do have a lot of families who go down to Disney every year and came to expect that and get pumped up from it and get you going and ready to go and everything to that extent. And uh, instead, no, you know, now, now it's completely changed. And I think it probably uh, is definitely something that that's missing uh, from, from that trip. And, and from that first time visitor like myself, who's coming there and, and wants to see, Oh, wow, look at this show. Fantastic. Looks awesome. I can't wait to see it. 
like you wouldn't necessarily even uh you know know what to expect unless you, you saw that video on the way over there yeah and i mean i even remember us coming down in 2010 for the first time like having absolutely no idea or any expectations whatsoever what we're doing i knew that there were four parks um and that was about it you know everything else that i knew about walt disney world i knew from tgi tgi friday with you know like full house and uh, I, Women's World and everybody coming down to walt disney world that's about as much as i knew about disney world um and like that space mountain and splash mountain were things yeah and that yeah, was it. sure that's uh that's crazy um very cool well um the next so i and then i oh, one of the other things i wanted to mention is i remember at the resort a they gave you the resort mug that you were able to go yeah. walk around the resort and fill up with as much soda as you wanted at any place that was open and we certainly did take quite advantage of that because there was one place that was open all night long i think it was just the the little like the cafeteria area yeah yeah, but I remember going down there like when we got back very late and filling up on the sodas down there um, and just drinking a, a ton of soda throughout that weekend. And that, that mug was great, though, and uh, was one of the things we really uh, loved about it as well, like a nice little extra perk they threw in there as well. I think that was also just for the dining plan, though, because I don't think you got uh, something just for staying at like you didn't just get it just for staying at the resort. Interesting. I think you're right, because I guess you were able to also bring that throughout the parks and have it refilled some places too. Yeah, well, I mean, I don't know if, I mean, probably you could have gotten away with getting, you know, there weren't a lot of like just places to go and, and refill, maybe Sunshine Seasons and like maybe one or two other places, but there's not a lot of places that you just go to that you can, that you're responsible for filling up your own drink. Um, gotcha. But again, something that is not as much of a thing anymore. Yeah. Really tough, because that, that's a, another cool little uh, little bit there. Um, and I remember going down there and, and coming back in the middle of the night and seeing everyone still in the pool and having fun. And, like, I just love that. We didn't go. We didn't get a chance to go to the pool. Uh, but it was still cool to see, like, you just felt like you were immersed in this never-ending vacation that even in the middle of the night, the pools were still open for people to go in there and, and enjoy. Yeah, I mean, that's still a thing, at least. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, I'd imagine so. But it's cool that they're like, you, you usually pulls close to 8 o'clock, 10 o'clock. I remember this being like after midnight and these people were still, you know, bouncing around, having fun. I, I'm pretty sure at a certain point it's swim at your own risk because um, I do not think that there were lifeguards on duty at midnight. Yeah, I agree. But again, with, you know, with like the Brazilian tour groups and everything like that, it'd be, it's hard to say no because of crowd control and stuff. So I, I'll never forget when you guys got married, my sister, God bless her. Um we had gotten to the Polynesian to get in, waiting for an Uber and it was going to be like an hour. And she went over and asked a cast member who was staying, was like run, was at that, um, was basically at the resort and basically said, um, Hey, can we use the pool while we wait for our Uber? And he was like, yeah, if you want to. So I guess, he did, you know, it's probably, you're right. I think it's probably at that stage. No one's really, you know, do what you got to do. And as long as you're not making too much noise and enjoying, we did not use the pool because I thought that was embarrassing. Um, you know, That would be like, unheard of today. Oh, uh, not, not allowed if you're not a resort guest, right? Well, not even, so certain pools are only for those specific guests. Now, so, you know, like if you went to, for example, like if you're at All Stars, right? Um, you could go to any of the all-star pools or you could go like you could conceivably go to like pop century or something like that, but only people staying at the Polynesian can go into the Polynesian pool. Cause it's so cool. Uh, like, you, can, you know, and, and even like, if you're saying, Hey, you, you know, we're at the grand Floridian, but we want to go over to the Polynesian. Can we do that now? Interesting. Like, there even a grand Floridian pool. I, yeah. Every resort has a pool. Oh, okay. Gotcha. That's cool. Though. That's uh, that. Yeah, that makes sense, though, to a certain degree, um, because if you, you know, why would you you don't want someone running around to each one of the different resorts like, you know, my sister would would probably love to do. Uh, so um, but yeah. So and then I remember uh, being coming back to the resort and they had on the TV already a video kind of it was like a video of some lady who was like riding all the different rides. And I'll know. Oh, yeah. You remember that video? It, it's ingrained in my memory. It's like it's a core memory. Uh, I, I'm sorry that I don't remember her name, uh, but yeah, no, it, it was it was a big thing when they retired those videos. The oh, they retired them. Yeah. 
Oh, that's a shame. They were great. I don't know why they retired them. So that so like they, they told people like, hey, this is the last time we're gonna play them. Well, I mean, at a certain point, yeah, because they were, you, you know, there's a certain point where if you watch them now, how, uh, um, what's the word? Like just how stuck in history it is because a lot of the stuff that she's talking about in those videos are, don't exist anymore or they're different or there's so many new things. Like if she's referring to the new attraction, Soren, that just came out, you know, okay, yeah, it hasn't been that for 10 years. Um, right. You know, so and I think there was just like they, they didn't want to keep reshooting it to update it. So it was, you know. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, and uh, I, I uh, so, yeah, so I remember that. And I remember being disappointed because I thought when I first went in, I thought that was a the only option you had to watch in your resort. Room, just that video on loop. And then I thought, oh, it'd be cool if there was only because I remember going to through the channels and it was all the Disney channels lined up. It was like Disney Channel. Disney Tunes, Disney Junior, and then like you got to like ESPN, ABC, and I was like, this is amazing. You only have the options of channels that Disney owned, but that was not unfortunately not the case. But I still think to this day it's a missed opportunity that you should only have options to, sh to channels that Disney has some sort of affiliation with when you're staying at the the parks. But I, know I mean, that. I'll tell you that that's that's the way it basically is on cruises. Oh really? Yeah. Like so, you have depending on which ship you're on, because it's, you have kind of different options on, on different, on different ships. Um, but basically on some of the ships, it's just, it's a cycle of, and it's, it's just on a constant loop. There's like the, Nick, there's the, the Disney cartoons one, there's the Mickey cartoons one, there's the Disney animated movies, there's the Disney live action movies one. There's one that plays like all the Marvel and like Star Wars stuff on a loop. And then on some of the other ships, like the newer ones, everything is just on demand. So, mm -hmm. It's just, it's basically like having Disney Plus and you just play anything that you possibly could want from the Disney catalog. That is so cool. Very, 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 very neat. And uh, yeah, I, I, I love it. I feel like you should just be immersed in all things Disney and they shouldn't, you shouldn't even like feel like there's, you know, just, just ver make it as cold like as you possibly can while you're there is how I, I need how I, to come on a Disney cruise with us. I need to. You're, <laughs> you're right. I do. We, we, we definitely have to set through that. Never been on any cruise, let alone a Disney cruise. What? And and that's the, like a lot of the things that we're we're talking about that are like, oh man, it'd be really cool if they still had this. They still have it. If you go on a cruise, like mm -hmm. the, the transportation, that is still a thing on a Disney cruise. All of the different amenities that you get that are just included on a cruise. Like, damn. You know. <laughs> I, I do. I do got to check that out. Um, at some point, uh, but. The next day we woke up and I remember, uh, you know, you feel a little bit like you got ran over by a freight train because you're like, wow, I just spent like, what an incredible day. I, I start my day, we get on a flight, we head down to Florida and just the whole day we're just going and going and going. And we, you had uh, recommended to us, hey, yeah, at the time too, Animal Kingdom still was not even open a full day. It was only a half day park. I think it closed at like six, seven o'clock. Is that, is that correct? Uh, that is correct um, for a couple of reasons. Uh, now they didn't. It's they really wa didn't want people to actually say it was a half day park. Um, yeah, it closed early, but that was mostly because you know you had the animals that were there that like needed to go back into enclosures and stuff. There wasn't really a lot of things to do in the nighttime because they didn't have any fireworks. There's no shows that are after. You know, they didn't really necessarily have. A lot of big attractions that needed to be open late you know they had expedition everest and that was about it yeah um so so yeah but you know the classic uh thing to do at that time was you do animal kingdom in the in the morning sometime around lunch afternoon time you head off to a different park usually the go-to was hollywood studios because also at the time hollywood studios was also kind of a, you could knock everything out in half a day yeah now, so it's, we now it's definitely a full day park, I think. Now, I would say both of them you could spend an entire day at. Yeah, yeah. And we did it. Uh, years later, we did come back and did the full, uh, you know, one park a day, $100 a day type deal uh, that they that they offered. And um, and it was great. Uh, but I remember this particular one we did a, um, I think we started Animal Kingdom, took a big, I remember we took a picture with Mickey and Minnie. Uh, mm -hmm. So we did get our meet and greet in because they're in their safari outfits uh, at this. And I yes, also remember we did the 
uh, Animal Kingdom tour, the uh, safari tour. Yeah. Which really add, I, which I thought was just fantastic and um, was really a lot of fun and added to a lot of the uh, sort of the journey there. Uh, being in Animal Kingdom is probably the highlight, honestly, especially the first time you're there. Uh, we didn't get anything to eat. Now, I don't know if we started our day eating breakfast. That's not true. Oh, it isn't true. We did eat something. Because you have three different pictures of a Mickey pretzel Ah, in this album of Facebook. So I used the snack for the Mickey pretzel. Yeah. Makes yes. sense. Because I'm thinking that maybe we must have had breakfast somewhere else or something beforehand. So I think what we probably would have done is we probably had like a, a snack or maybe we burned a quick service on like something at the at the resort. Could like have been. Something quick. Um, and then just ate along the way. Yeah. Yeah. And I do remember, too, you wait, wait, when, you, when you're getting up at a resort at Disney, everybody's obviously like minded. Everyone's getting ready to go to a park somewhere. So I always yeah. like that. It's fun. It feels like you're in it together. Similarly, even when you're going like to California, it's a little different because they have so many hotels right along the strip. So even when you're walking over in the morning over to like Disneyland, everybody's going with you uh, to the parks. I always think that's like a fun, like builds the anticipation for getting there. And uh, one of those kind of feelings of Disney that I think is just great. And then uh, we ended, it was, what was the big rides? I know Dinosaur was there because we're in there. We're in, it started raining and we are in our, there's pictures of us. Yeah. In uh, so the big rides there are the Safari ride. Yeah. Dinosaur. Yeah, and Expedition Everest. Oh right. Expedition. Although I guess you could, I guess you could add on the Kali River Rapids as well. Um, yeah. But then beyond that, there was Festival of the Lion King, and it's tough to be a bug. Yeah, we didn't do Festival of the Lion King. We did do Tough to Be a Bug, and I thought it was awesome. I remember it being hugely into Tough to Be a Bug. I thought it was one of the. I'm a big fan of 4D shows, and yeah. that I, I think is is that that's gone unfortunately, and I think it's a no, great it's still around. Is it? Yeah. They got rid of Bugs Land, which used to be there. Yeah, so they, well, so they got rid of the Bugs Land at Disney, at, at Disneyland, in California Adventure. Oh. But it's tough to be a bug, it's still a thing in Animal Kingdom. Bugs Land is still in Animal Kingdom? It's not, there's no land, it's just the, just the attraction. Because okay. the attraction is in the tree. Gotcha, gotcha. Oh, is it? Okay, cool. Yeah, no, that's very cool. And I remember just totally marveling over the tree. Uh, first time seeing that. Uh, it's, it's amazing. And, uh, that was very cool. And then, uh, any other memories you had of, of being at, at Animal Kingdom? Uh, I remember getting drenched. Yeah. It was, well, so it's tough too, when you're used to going to the parks all the time, I'm sure. And you have guests coming in who are never there. So they're not going to ever walk away. There could be torrential dr- downpour. We're going to just power mm-hmm. through. Um, and we did, we bought the ponchos. And uh, ironically enough, most recently when we went to uh, Disneyland Paris, it poured and my wife went and got ponchos and returned. My daughter and I both, you know, huge cheers from us because we're like, oh, the day is continuing. We're not going home. And uh, she said, it reminds me of our first trip to Disney when I think you guys must have said, because we have the official Disney ponchos in there. too. Yes. Clearly, this is this was not expected to rain. And so we went and plopped down the however much it is for the ponchos. And uh, and there we are uh, looking pretty spiffy in the ponchos, too. I can't lie. And I'm pretty sure it was just you two because uh, I'm looking at some of these pictures and in some of them, like you guys, you have your ponchos, but then like everything else is, is dry underneath. And but my wife and I are just soaked from like about chest up. It's just <laughs> there's very distinct difference on my yeah. record. All right, so after Animal Kingdom now, we went right from Animal Kingdom over to uh, Universal Studios. Not Universal Studios. I nope. Hollywood. <laughs> what an absolute party foul uh, by me. But I uh, went to Hollywood Studios. This was, I will say, first thing walking in. Do you, what, what, what would you say is the first thing that I remember about this visit to Hollywood Studios upon entry? I mean, in uh, 2013, probably had to have been the hat, right? The hat, yes. The hat icon. And there was something about it. I don't know if it's just remembering that, you know, MGM Studios when I was a kid, remembering the big uh, welcome party for Hulk Hogan when he went to WCW. But I've always had a fondness for this park. And I think that going into this park, knowing that we had, uh, you have obviously uh, Tower of Terror, which I had never done. 
uh, Aerosmith's uh, what is the Rock and Roller Coaster, which I had never done. I was really excited uh, to be at this park. And uh, honestly, in looking back and when I when all things had wrapped up here on that first day, this was probably my favorite park of the of the weekend. I had such a great time uh, during our stay there at uh, at Hollywood Studios. I still think that it has. I mean, now with all the Star Wars stuff, with some yeah. Toy Story stuff, it's definitely recovered some of that prestige and it's definitely upped its value. But I always thought that Hollywood Studios was a very underrated theme park. Absolutely, and and th- and we were on fire this day. We started off. We went to Pizza Planet, which was a lot of fun. Love that. Love that restaurant. It's a shame it's not there anymore. R.I.P. Pizza Planet. <laughs> Yeah, it's not there anymore. And I thought it, they did such a good job in really recreating the Pizza Planet that's in that Toy Story film and bringing it to life. I, I really enjoyed it. I mean, it wasn't even like anything fancy. It was your standard. I mean, you know me, I, I've always been a, a fan of quote unquote crappy pizza. Uh, so for me, this was right up my alley. You go and you get your um, your personal pan pizza and uh, you sat down, and uh, I don't even, did they even give you sides? I think it was, that was pretty much it. You just, like, standard stuff, and away you went. Maybe, like, a salad or something, or maybe, like, a breadstick or something. Um, I mean, I will say that Pizza Planet still lives on in Pizza Rizzo. Um, it's virtually the, unchanged as far as everything, including the theming and everything. Maybe the facade has changed a little bit. Um, but not, not a whole lot has changed since it's Pizza Planet days. Um, but I will say that uh, we went recently... Um, a couple weeks ago, and my wife got the gluten-free pizza that they have there at Pizza Rizzo, and okay. everybody, and we, and then we kind of walked over to the to um, the the uh, ABC commissary so that I could get some food, and everybody, even the cast members, were like, "Where did you get that pizza? It looks so good." Oh. Um, so uh, I mean, I don't know, maybe order the gluten-free pizza and maybe um, try your luck instead of that one. Instead, of, if you don't like the the Pizza Rizzo original. Yeah, I, I, so Pizza Rizzo is where Pizza Pizza Hut, uh, sorry, Pizza Planet was. Yeah. Oh, same cool. building, same exact setup, same everything. Oh, that is awesome! Very, very cool. And uh, yeah, no, that that's that's great to hear about the gluten free option as well. Uh, obviously, no, you know, little toys and all that from Toy Story though at Pizza Rizzo, mm-hmm. right? There never was. Never they never had the little toy thing with the claw they, they game? Never, there was nothing. There was absolutely nothing there that if you walked in and didn't know you were walking into Pizza Planet, there was nothing there that screamed, oh, this is the Pizza Planet from the movie. Oh, wow. That's I think your, your your nostalgia might be blending you a little bit. Perhaps. Perhaps you're right. Um, and then I remember, obviously, we, I went on to the great movie ride, RIP as well, uh, for the first time and loved it. I thought it was amazing. Uh, took a lot of the photos there in front of the, uh, they have the, uh, the China Theater kind of recreated mm-hmm. that. Uh, they still have that though, right? They still have the facade, yeah. Yeah, because it's in the Guardians of the Galaxy Christmas special. That's where they filmed it. So, yeah. Um, sure, yeah. So I, I love the idea. They had the Hulk Hogan out there. This is before, obviously, all the stuff that came out with Hulk Hogan. So I'm, I was full doing the old, you know, th- throwing up my hand and getting all excited. And, uh, and that was great. Now, I had no recollection of what we had for dinner on this day. Uh, you said it was at Melrose. Mama Melrose? Mama Melrose, yeah. Um, and the only way that I was able to, to do that is digging back into the archives of Facebook. And there is a picture of uh, your wife there. And I can see in the background some of the restaurant. And from that, I was able to piece together, oh, okay, that's Mama Melrose. Because there's the brick uh, inside and like the kind of like the market lights that were over, that, that were kind of doing the overhang thing and uh, and that's what gave it away right on that's awesome uh very very cool and yeah and so was this is this place still there yeah it's still there oh very cool and uh it, i i don't remember it at all is, is it is it good <laughs> like i don't even like i remember almost every place i've eaten at disney and i can tell you pretty much everything about it i have no clue about mom or melrose at all it is good the only thing is that it's hard to mess up Italian food. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, it, it, like it's, you know, when you have some amazing, fantastic Italian food, some of the best food you're ever going to eat. But even like, like, you know, not good Italian food is still Italian food. So it's still going to be good. Um, sure. yeah, you know, so uh, I would say from, you know, at the time, also, this is 
before a lot of the other kind of restaurants that really amped up in Disney World. Um, yeah. So as far as Italian food options at this point, your your options were basically this place, going to the Italy Pavilion in Epcot, um, and maybe uh, Tony's Town Square in Magic Kingdom, which Tony's Town Square was definitely on the decline. It's since kind of redeemed itself a little bit from what I hear. Um, but, you know, when, again, Mama Melrose was one of those places that we always went to when we were on vacation. So it was one of those places that we wanted to bring you guys to. Oh, very cool. No, and I think I'm sure at the time we probably loved it, especially knowing at the time what a huge fan I was of Italian food. Very picky eater when I first started dating my wife. So I, I had never even had sushi. I mean, wouldn't eat anything. Uh, so I think that probably is one of the reasons I think as well that uh, probably jumped out at you guys as being a place that would really appeal to me. And uh, yeah, where can we bring where can we bring Thomas that it's going to he's not going to complain about the food and he's going to have something to eat? Exactly. Exactly. Um, and then we wrapped up a couple of things I remember. Number one, uh, you and my wife both had no interest. Did we all go on rock and roller coaster? I mean, I'm pretty sure we did. We had to have. I don't know if my wife went on because it doesn't because I remember years later she went on and was every, we were amping her up all excited. So I'm thinking she took a pass. So I I'm pretty sure that it was just you and my wife on Tower of Terror. That's that was what I was going to say. Yes, but I that, don't I don't not, know about not, Rock and Roller Coaster. And I remember shit in my pants getting ready to go on Rock and uh, Tower of Terror and during the ride shitting my pants because it is actually a little spooky when you're going through the Tower of Terror. Um, but at the end of the day, I loved the ride. Thought it was so much fun. Glad that we uh, were able to go on there. Um, and then we ended our night with Fantasmic. Uh, which is still to this, at that point, think about it, the first time you're ever seeing it, because and, and, and also Hollywood Studios, got to give shout outs where, 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 where they should be here. I remember we did uh, photos in front of the Muppet Vision, loved Muppet Vision, <laughs> photos all throughout and ends with Fantasmic. And uh, for me, it was, you know, Euphoria, Disney Euphoria, all the characters coming out, that scene I always talk about of all the characters coming out and really everybody just, so excited. It's a great wrap up of the day. I remember walking through kind of that little pathway where they have all the pictures of all the different villains. And it was, it was awesome and uh, very, very cool to get down there and see it. And uh, still to this day, one of my favorite shows, but that night it was, I was amped up and fired up after that. I was ready to go. Oh yeah. I mean, it's, and it's still one of our favorites as well. We just went uh, when we went for my birthday. Uh, after dinner because we couldn't do anything else so we rolled ourselves down to Fantasmic and they have changed one or two things probably for the better um but it's still an amazing show yeah it's uh it is it's one of my favorites and uh, I'm glad you got to go down there was this your first time going down since the pandemic since it's reopening yeah because I mean it just opened recently anyway so uh but yeah oh very cool and uh, the music is just so inspiring it's just great um and I do th I do remember a um, I, I, the spirit inside of me at this point wanted to just keep going. Now, remember, we've been now second straight day there. We did all of, uh, Animal Kingdom. And then after Animal Kingdom, we did all of, uh, the, obviously Hollywood studios. And I remember the plan at this point was that we were all going to go to uh, Disney Springs, uh, because it was the only chance we were going to get to go to Disney Springs. It wasn't even Disney Springs. It was downtown Disney. Yeah, Springs. it was still downtown Disney at the time. Yep. And we had gotten, we were on the bus heading there, and everyone at this point is just dying. And, I, and my legs were killing me. And I do remember, too, like, it was just, it, it was just, it, it, it was too much. It was a thousand degrees hot. Um, everybody was wiped out. But I really still wanted to go down to downtown Disney because I'm thinking we're never going to get a chance to go. Um, and I actually think not because we eventually didn't go. Because I remember we got to the, we took the bus all the way there. And then when we got there, no one wanted to get off the bus. Everyone was just like, we're, they're too tired. Um, well, and also, I'm pretty sure everything by that point was closed. So there wasn't going to be a whole lot to do anyway. This is true. Uh, but I think that not going actually was a blessing for me because it allowed for at least a day of me going. And it's a longer time of me thinking, wow, this place is amazing. And this place is all things Disney. And you're walking through and it's like a town of all things Disney. And it's just amazing. And everywhere you go, there's Disney characters and you're shopping. And next to you, here comes Mickey Mouse. He's got a bag in his hand too. And uh, that's just not exactly how it is. <laughs> so Not even close. What you just described sounds amazing. Is that right? The way I'm saying it, it sounds like, <laughs> wow, everyone, who wouldn't want to go there? Um, 
And it's not like that really at all. I feel like Disney Springs is a fun thing you do for an afternoon when you first arrive. And then that's, you don't really need to really go back. Um, you know, it's, it's good to do it as a part of the visit, but I don't think it's anything, any great shakes uh, and anyone's missing out on anything by not going. So, I mean, I will say that you can still have an amazing day at Disney Springs, just walking around doing stuff. Um, yeah, great. You but know, it, downtown Disney, maybe not as much. For sure, Um, because it was in that weird transition period where, you know, back in the day in the 80s and 90s, downtown Disney was the place to be. uh, And it was truly the adult section like Pleasure Island was uh, Mm -hmm. from what I have heard. I never got to experience it in its glory. But what I have heard was actually uh, crazy, like drugs, drinking, like all sorts of crazy shenanigans going on at Pleasure Island. Really? Um, yeah, so I we never got to experience that part of it, but um, it was kind of like moving away from that, obviously, into what it has now become. So I think then it wasn't anything to really like go crazy about anyway. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, and I remember went back home. I remember that at this point now it's starting to hit you. Like you, you feel you, you, you want to keep going, but your body's just like, no, we need a break here. We need to sit down. Um, and I remember we had, we had passed out. I think the plan was, uh, to get there for rope drop the next morning. I know you were, you were pumping up rope drop is like a big thing. And, uh, we had never actually made it for a rope drop until our last visit to, uh, Disneyland Paris. And I see Mm -hmm. what the hype was all about. It was great. All the characters were there to welcome us. And, uh, it was a lot of fun. It was a really, really nice idea and a lot of fun to do it. But on this day in 2013, our third day on this trip, we did not make it for a drop. We did not. Um, and yeah, you know, it, it's a great experience. It's definitely, if you can do it, definitely. You know, it, the little pre-show that they do at the beginning is awesome. Um, and also, of course, not having any lines for your first two or three rides is also awesome. Um, yeah. But, you know, we needed that extra little time sleeping in for sure. 100%. And I think one of the things that really uh, jumped out at me pretty much right away was, uh, and, and one of the things I remember uh, so fondly was, A, just being back there. You know, I'd grown up. That was obvious. That was the park we went to every time. That was Disney yeah, World. It wasn't like you went to any of the other parks. So you'd get there, and that was your, your our entire stay was at the Magic Kingdom, and we referred to it as Disney World. So yeah, that's you and pretty much everybody else. Really? And with it, Yeah, outside of the no. When you say, oh, we're going to Disney, most people say, we're going to Magic Kingdom, and then that's basically it. Maybe we'll go over to Epcot, but that's not Disney, that's Epcot. Well, yeah, especially because our grandparents lived there, so we'd go, we'd spend the time with them, and the one day we'd go was Magic Kingdom. So, you know, it was kind of like we were building this up to get back to there. Um, I remember that day, it was without question the hottest of the hot. It was about 110 degrees, it felt like. Um, and... You know, that didn't stop us, though. We, we went at, went through the whole day, did pretty much everything under the sun. And I'll never forget uh, doing the uh, parade. And you and Amanda, and Amanda knew all the dance staffs, your, your wife, yeah. because she had been to the parade all, the whole time. Um, and we braved the condition for that. We braved the condition for the Mickey show. And there's a great scene, a great picture of my wife uh, underneath, like, a tiny piece of shade with, like, a fan or something looking like, this is the worst time of the year to be here. What are we doing? I mean, um, yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, at the same time, it was it was great to be there for that. And uh, I think probably one of my favorite uh, parts of that entire time was the, I think we had probably the best day in terms of our food uh, at the Magic Kingdom there. Uh, VR Guest Restaurant just opened up. And so we ended up uh, going there and we got like a lunch Rec- uh, a lunch reservation for it was it yeah and that counted as a quick service it does kind of was because you could use the kiosk to do it and i mean it was still early in the process to it no i didn't see bell or, Be- or beast or anybody walking around but it was just incredible to be there we took tons of photos there and then uh for our our snack we had like this gaston's apple a frozen apple cider do you remember this i remember it very very well yeah it, and <laughs> it, it it was at gaston's tavern and it was it's called lefou's brew lefou's brew and it was the only thing open it was the only thing they served there yeah do they still only serve that 
No, now they they do different things than like they, they you can get some stuff for breakfast. There's a couple of other like snacks and drinks and stuff that you can get. But yeah, at the time that was basically it. It was that and, like soda and stuff. Yeah, crazy that the place was, was able to stay around for so long just selling those. But I remember you really liked them back then. I don't think you love it so much now. But back then you were like hyping that drink up, and we yeah. all loved it. I feel like it was part of the novelty of it because it was very yeah. different from anything else that we had had. Um, and then uh, when the uh, when like the Harry Potter area at Universal opened up and they had butter beer, it was a there was a little bit of a competition for a while. Mm. Uh, but I think butter beer is superior. Is it? I I always um, you know but one of the things I loved about it as well was um, I, I think I think the idea I, th- I remember seeing him and he's like really was like a funny character too. Uh, seeing his whole deal there. Uh, is it similar to butterbeer? Isn't butterbeer like butterscotch? It's a little, so as far as like the consistency and the texture, and it was like, oh, new frozen drink at Magic Kingdom, new frozen drink at Universal. It was like kind of a, there's a little bit of a competition for a little while. Um, yeah. No, so, that and, makes a certain degree of sense. Yeah. Um, and then and then we ended up going and finishing our night out at Crystal Palace. Uh, so I got even got some character dining in there and uh, had a really nice time kind of doing that. And uh, it was uh, really cool. We, I think it was Eeyore, Piglet, Winnie the Pooh and Tigger 2, right? It was indeed. There you go. So uh, I thought that was really cool. It was amazing. We were able to get character dining like at the last minute and that it was included in our meal plan. So it was more, I mean, nowadays, I would say it's probably probably two entitlements if they still have the Disney, if they have the dining plan at all. Um, <laughs> but And that was one of the perks of the dining plan is you can, you know, it's just as much to go to the character dining as it was to go to Mama Melrose as far as the dining plan goes. But if you're talking about price difference, yeah, definitely way different. Yeah. Yeah, no, it was it was great. Uh, I loved it, too, because you had all it was all the buffet options They had the little kids table, which had all my favorites, like your chicken tenders, your mac and cheese, your mozzarella sticks. And uh, we had One some top, top photos, Tiffy top photos with. Yes, so we are having the time of our life. I'm pretty sure I am legitimately beaming with enthusiasm and you are uh, trying to match it. In, <laughs> I'm trying not to fall asleep. <laughs> it's a little it was a little long of a uh little long of a couple of days but then you guys ended up leaving we said our we said our goodbyes probably the last time we would see you guys probably for a while yeah because I, I don't know that we come back to florida for in 2014 it might have been the next time we saw you was for your bachelor party i think that that sounds accurate actually yeah it's pretty crazy uh, yeah. Which is which is almost two years later for those folks who are not following yeah. along. Actually, Unless there might have been some time that we came up, we went back to New York at some point during that time frame. But but probably other than that, yeah. Yeah, pretty pretty nutty. So um, crazy stuff. But we, uh, you know, so it was it was. It, I remember now. I'm feeling. I was feeling like nostalgic. I was feeling really sad. You guys are leaving. I'm trying to, my best to get as much of Disney as I possibly can. This would absolutely, if, if this were today, we would have left the park with you at this moment and we would have headed back home because my wife would have been having none of it. Ten months into the relationship, maybe she's still trying to butter me up a little bit. She allows us to stay until the very last minute. We were there into our flight to get back home to New York because we had work that day it was at like 6 a.m. So we went, we, are, we were in the park. Now, I, I, I want to say it was probably 7 a.m. So we were in the park until 3 a.m. and then went back, took Disney Transportation back to the All-Star Resort. Immediately from the All-Star Resort, we jumped on the Magic Express back to the airport. My wife slept like a little bit on the way back to the airport. And I remember Magic Express was getting you ready for the rest of the year. Yep. They had EO on that was showing you, thanks so much for coming. Don't forget, you should come back for Mickey's Not-So-Scary Halloween Party. Then mm-hmm. from there, don't forget, come back for uh, the, the holidays. and Everyone, pretty much everyone at this point, there's very few people on the Magic Express. Most people are falling asleep. I am literally beaming. And I'm just like, oh, my God. I, I, keep in mind, I'm almost at 24 hours awake here. And I'm just, like, raring to go. Like, I'm looking at this, and I'm like, I want to come back. I want to come back. I want to come back. And then a moment of it hit me where I was like, yeah, I could, this is a little bit of a cult because... <laughs> 
They want you to just, that's what you want. To, they want you to think. They want you to go, oh, they want you to come back and be like, I want to plan my next trip. And um, and that was what I wanted to do. I'll tell you, I, if it were up to me, we would have came right back and would be uh, planning the next trip and ready to go. And uh, they, they suckered me into the entire thing. But we had such a great, great trip. And uh, it was so much fun. And I remember getting back and, and just being on an absolute Disney high for a while. That's kind of how I got in. To Disney podcasting, immediately found Lou Mangello and uh, I, I, the, I didn't even know what his podcast is called anymore. Uh, but I used to listen to him every week. If he was on, I'd listen no matter what it was. I'd listen to his show every single week and uh, really started to embrace the whole idea of adulting at Disney. Yeah. And I, I remember also vividly when you started doing that and you would text me and go, hey, did you hear? Did you know about this? Did you hear about this? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I've, I've known about that for a while. Like, well, and I, I remember come to the dark side now. Where have you been? We've been waiting for you. Well, and I remember like I, I I didn't know. I remember being like, we didn't know about Cinderella's royal table, but Cinderella's royal table was definitely two, and I think that's why yes. uh, as didn't mention at the time, uh, yeah. because it was two thing two. Uh, it would count. You'd have to use two sit down restaurant meal options at Cinderella's royal table in order to do that. Um, but yeah, and, and not to mention that night. So I go. I got home. I worked. And I remember I called my my wife and I was like, uh, wow, what an amazing trip. I miss you already, blah, blah, blah. And she was like, all right, hold on now. I just saw you the whole a whole weekend then. Like, let's let's pump the brakes a little bit. Chris. <laughs> she was trying to, so that that that's always something we always uh joke about to this day. But yeah, it was it was. It was such a great trip. And that night I went to Raw after I went to work. So you think about it, 3 a.m. at Disney, 6 a.m. flight, work at 9 a.m. Everyone's asking me how I'm feeling in like the most uh you know, uh, not the most genuine type way, pretty disingenuously. Yeah. Except I was like, you really called out of work because you were on a trip. Um, yeah, but that being said, ended up, uh, you know, really uh, enjoying the heck out of that trip and uh, just uh, enjoyed so much of it. To think that like now I would never be able to stay at Disney until the last possible minute, hop on a flight and head back home. Um, back then, that's just that's what you did. Oh, no. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, I would say also now you would probably not be able to only stay three days and cram that much stuff in it, you know, in order to do as much as we did during that trip. Now would take at least four or five days easily. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, no, it would. And uh, I think I, I completely agree. I think that's one of the big pieces of it as well um, that I remember is just how many things that we did over that small period of time. It was just go, 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 go. I love it. Uh, but yeah, I think it's, Certainly, if you have time and can really, because I would have loved, of course, retrospectively to enjoy more of the resort. I think that would have been yeah. that would really that would have been the only thing would have been great to have a downtime there to be able to do that. But considering how much we did, you know, six meals in three days and, you know, four parks, just such a great, uh, such a great experience. And uh, we set forth a long path of us uh, adulting at Disney and just loving every bit of it. Uh, and now, obviously, with a, a three-year-old, uh, we it's a different type of deal, but we, we still love the parks to this day. You can still adult, but just now it's adulting as well as bringing up the next generation of, of Disney aficionados. Exactly, exactly. Well, if you remember your fav- your first trip as an adult to Disney, let us know in the comments section. We'd love to hear some of those stories. And, uh, Steve, anything else you want to say here before we get on out of here? No, just I've uh, been loving walking down memory lane and uh hopefully there are many more memories to be made in the future but uh we'll see you real soon yeah and uh, a big thanks to to you guys for for making that move down to orlando and allowing us to experience all this through you guys and uh it was uh, really a lot of fun and uh i can't, can't wait for us to be able to do it uh with our with our kids in the future with you guys so until next time everybody thanks so much for checking us out and i will uh See you guys in the next video.